itself requires a mindset. It's not a difficult thing to grasp. Creativity is a difficult thing. Well, it's either you want it or you don't want it. But it's a thing that can be manifested through your way of thinking, right? So if you open your mind to what programming can do for you, you realize that programming can bring your creative vision to life. Right? So programming in itself is just a tool. That is all it is. There's nothing special about it. Just like when you can write a sentence, you can write code. So you write, the boy walks, or this boy is romping, this boy is rolling, the same concept of rolling. The only difference is the scale with a lot of syntax. Right? Syntax is about a greater than, less than signs, equal, question mark, semicolons. But once you know to apply these things differently, then you will basically get a hang of code. So in itself, a lot of learning will be done by you guys. Right? I'm just introducing the fundamental principles that will set you on a path to appreciation. Right? So before we start writing any code, we're right, gonna right, start with something that you're familiar with already, which is English. Everybody know English? I have a Spaniard on the camera, I'm not I'm not Sheldon bilingual, so you know. Much of that, yeah. So we're gonna start with English, simple English. To see how we can transform English into programming. So just keep the mindset open that programming is just a tool. It's like you use a hammer, driving a nail, use programming to create the visions. See? All right, so if we want to write a sentence, we say, let this boy walk. How will you write a sentence? Anybody? Anybody can say it. In code or in real life? No, in real life, we're going to start with English now. We're going to start with no program any of this right now. Let this boy walk. All right, well, we'll see. Let this boy walk. That's it. This boy walk. That's it. So don't overthink it. I realize you guys are overthinking what I just asked you. Now, as an English question, you know, what would you write the same thing? Let this boy walk. Right? Just let this boy walk. And that is really what we're trying to get at, right? So, how would you say, let this girl see? Let this girl see, right? So let's stop going with the thing that I <laughs> Let this girl see. Me and you don't talk, right? Me and I say words to you, and you say words to me, right? So, why not make it seem like we're not talking English? We go on again. So, why are you talking about Let this person see. All right. Right, I would assume the same way. <laughs> All right, cool. So let this person sit. So what we're doing is we're basically commanding that person to sit. We're commanding the girl to sing. We're commanding the boy to walk, right? That is all a computer does. It takes instruction and it gives. You see me? So if you want a computer, move the web page. You have to move the web page, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Tell it to move with it, and it listens to you once you write a proper syntax. So it's like it has its own dialect, just like how we have English, it has different languages. And a lot of the complication that comes in is people bombarding you with know, a lot of different languages that don't those fundamentally the same thing. Right? So right now we're talking about problem in you know, like, try to see how close to English we can get. Because fundamentally everything comes down to what? Ones and zeros. Everything you write on the computer, no matter how you write it, it's always the computer see. Compile it. So all the fundamental terms, the compilation and everything, that is what all the computers do. Taking this English statement and so it's a language that them can understand. One one zero 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 all the All right. So with that said, no, start with English, right? So let me see how we can move from English. So like I said, a lot of the beginning part of the class is the fundamentals. Once you understand it, you get the appreciation of what we're trying to do with this thing, right? All right, so I'm going to start with another sentence again. We want the girl to talk, right? So let the girl talk. Right, so we understand let the girl talk, right? We understand it, but how do we get it to a point where the computer itself understands it? We need a specialized tool, we need specialized software, we need specialized everything in order for the computer to comprehend it, right? 
So there's a thing called compile, right? Like I said, this is just high level knowledge. We're going to leave up, we're just going to appreciate it, right? We have a compiler where we take the English statement and turn it into one one two. So the thing that you will actually use to code is called an IDE fundamentally, right? Where you don't need to remember, just remember that the term, you can research the so what it means. But the IDE is fundamentally built up with a compiler inside, right? So with this compiler, all it's doing is basically taking the code that you write and converting it, converting it into a language that the computer can understand. And that is the fundamental of how you move from coding to instructing the computer as to what to do. Right, cool. There's just something worth mentioning, but we'll get deeper. A lot of focus won't be around the IDE either. So let me take a deep. All right, so let me add a little story, right? So, before the internet, there was no internet, right? <laughs> yeah, it's philosophical, I know, right? There was no internet, so if I wanted to share a document with you, what would I have to do? Well, you can't make it on the internet, you can make it on the internet. <laughs> All right, cool. So, I want to send a letter, like I walk to you physically and say, oh, see a letter, see a letter. See a document, see a letter, call it in the own part, call it a document, right? Until this genius came up with something they call it, yes. or his company. They said, no, so. No, no, so I think it's also because we check the um, get information. Because we, right? Yeah. So, you know, people at the, back in the days, they never really have the access to the internet when it was created because specialized organizations, they created people like NASA, people who want secret exchange messages in the background, and as well, where people can it. actually receive. Is it? And then society was restricted back then. And I did some research last time. But the information internet was free, it was not released to the public. It was actually reserved, like the government and certain type of people. Yeah. We set it for um, restriction, we set criteria, they would go and like, actually you know, change the information, like NASA and a few people that were certain type of that. Indeed. So it's just like, like that they're reading ahead. That is exactly right. So thanks for that sharing, right? So we have the internet. Look, if I draw a blue, call the internet, right? Or we have a point from here, a call is NASA, to a secret society in Russia. Do you? NASA won't pass a secret message from themselves in the United States to a company in Russia, right? So it's have a pass through the internet. We have to get creative when well, I put the Russia. All right, so they need a way to send a document from states to Russia. But we can't just do the regular word document because there was no email, there was no nothing, there was no build up on the internet. You know, just raw, you follow certain protocols, call somebody in HTTP. You can just do the research, and it's not really matter, right? It matters, you know, you know what I know, right? So HTTP is just a, a protocol or a method of transferring the document. From one point to the next. I know a lot of you guys probably go up on the internet and say, all right, how you type in Google? HTTP. I say Google. I go to com, right? So we're not going on the internet. No, we're not Yeah, man. And, and the reason why I might say to so we lose Steena, I might say we're not know this, we're not know that. A lot of programmers don't know the syntax off of the top of their head. They have a thing when you just research. More until the computer was jump, by the time it how does the computer jump? Once you understand the basic fundamental of the syntax, you can know how to transfer that research into actual code. So a lot of, lot of the programming is just research. A lot of it is just asking and seeing who in other world you can read it and see how you can probably copy that and change up some code and make it read. Understand the logic and you can understand and appreciate the research. So the HTTP is a transfer point, the protocol, just like in a network, in a network that pass, right? So just like how oh, NASA said they might pass a message to Russia, they need a protocol, a, a tunnel that is established between themselves. So they create HTTP as a way to establish a tunnel to talk. You know, like when the Mexican they might come out of jail and give you a tunnel. I say it again, I say it again, you see me? All right, so that aside, right? 
in establishing this protocol now, they needed something that is, that the internet understands, or in this case, let's move up a, a little step further. Let's, let's call it the browser. Something that the browser can understand, or a tool that will, will aid them in transferring things over the internet, right? So that's why they created that browser. So the browser was just a tool used to convert these documents into the form or read the documents that was presented and written by NASA and translated to Russia or trans translated for Russia. One fundamental language, one fundamental principle. Cool. So in saying this now, this tool has to have the ability to comprehend, to understand the language that is coded. In this case, HTML. Right? You needed a way to understand how to comprehend this language. So in order to build a browser, you need it. Right. So, so that again, you need to build a browser for us? No, you build a browser to convert HTML documents that is being sent mm -hmm. from one point to the next. So the browser itself is a, is a tool. Like, just like I get a Microsoft Word, I get all my Word document. The browser open HTML documents. So they need specialized software for some of those work. They, they create a specialized software to open the, the, the format of the document that you send. So just like how oh, you can't open Microsoft documents with any other software, you needed to create something to open these specialized documents that was being sent from NASA to Russia. And that's how they created a browser. Why they created a browser? All right? So everybody have appreciation of what is really happening with the, with the flow of information from one point to the next? Yeah, totally understand. Alright, brilliant, brilliant. So this browser now, this is just this is our topic a little, but just to get appreciation. So this browser is just another software that somebody created to do the deed. Just like a Microsoft where there's another software. It's like if any software you create in this class will aid in doing the deed, right? And just like I stated earlier. This browser was written for you to see and appreciate. But in the back end, everything is just one zone. All information is being compiled in the back. Computer can understand that this is a browser, this is what it is. Right? Okay, cool. So, Yes, is it. All right, so I'll get into that. I'm getting into it, but very good question. The question was how does the browser understand HTML? Or how does the browser break down HTML into simplified formats for it to be converted into the document that you send to? We'll get into that, right? So now we understand how the document can be taken from one point to the next and why the internet was created. I understand that, I appreciate it, right? All right, cool. Let's go into the syntax of these documents. In Microsoft Word, if I write hello, and I want to bold hello. So hello is written using flat line, but I want to look something like Everybody has how bold it is. Make a word bold. All right, so I want it to be bold. Why are you going to do that in America? So, um, so if you have a layout highlighting and then change the context, why don't you bold it? Program, the program Microsoft wants to change by using the settings. The program Microsoft? The command, basically, like, you need structure to bold. Okay. So you just take a little bold thing at the top. Yeah, I highlight bold. I understand this bold one time. Doing. But it's simpler now because this is what you see and this is what you understand. Software has come so far that you can itemize where by picking up on You can change up the fonts, make it look bold. I want to press a little item thing and the itemize the underline, press the underline thing, the underline. Them thing is easy now. Back in the days, Microsoft already made this when the internet dropped. So, however, bold it is in a document that I sent to Russia, however, bold it is. You need to create a specialized language 
when the browser will need to compile them to for them to see the bold front or the bold text in that document, right? So I give you guys an idea of what HTML document could look like, right? So in basic Word document, there's a bunch of sentences. There's a bunch of sentences, right? But the HTML document wants to be a bunch of sentences, but it is not, right? It is not because these software in those times have existed. I might say, back in the day, it wasn't a, it wasn't a website, it was just document exchange. That's all they were trying to establish, right? So they created something that they call HTML. So that is why HTML was born, because they wanted some way to create a document that can be transferred over the internet. And there was no specialized thing to do that. So they had to create a language to do so. And you see how HTML has grown to date. Now we have websites and all that. People are documenting it to beautify websites. Oh, they move from this to this. So the fundamental of this beginning class is to get you there, to appreciate how they move from just a word document to the website we know and love today. So let's dive in. So as I stated before, if you want to pull a, a document in, each, um, in Word, in sorry, Microsoft Word, you just press the ball and see what matters about that data, you know how to print it. So you have to establish a structure, right? So everybody understands how the body works, right? Yeah, everybody have a body. Why? Everybody have a body. When, when I'm, when I'm doing this, I'm so like, I can assure us I have a body. Come on, guys, guys, we're working on it. I don't know if I'm going to over the thing. As I tell you, I saw it. I was going to some simple question. My name is Adon, like a cool. I have a body right now. I have a body, right? Okay. So, a way to uh, questions online? I used to get punched. Sorry, sorry about that. My con sorry, my apologies. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So naturally, there's a thing that, there's a part of design that aids, right? there's, a, there's a thing that aids in design and development, which is nature. So a lot of things you realize when you sit today come from nature. You know what I mean? And HTML in itself kind of stole a lot of concepts from nature, which is us, right? It's us. So look at the body, and you guys will never forget this. I know the body in that, you know it. A question or know it, right? So the body in itself is just a body, right? So I write HTML for starters and HTML ending. So we need to know where the, where, the, where the entire body starts from and we end. So this document that I'm writing now is an HTML document. It's in the sale. That document that the browser needs to know say that the HTML is forward in the face. And that's what the browser understand. The browser understand HTML, right? So just like we're, we're documenting with that X, just like a PDF with that PDF, HTML is that HTML. It's just another document. If you write, you can save a browser or a page from an internet or a website. Is that that HTML file that will be? You can try it. Just to save, just press Control S or Command S. If you use a Mac, it's a Command S. Control S for any website. And that's why I don't know is a document that I don't know. They look pretty and it's a move when I jump when I dog like pretty pictures there, but that's a document that I just see. Just like you know it's document can look pretty, the HTML document can look pretty too. And that's the website. See? Alright, so this is where my sound fans in this come from. People start running up and doing but I just Asian, what did I tell the browser say, listen, the HTML document is on the way. But the browser itself is pretty complicated, so what's the right answer to me? Let me speak with you. You know what I mean? Inside. I need to speak to you. And that's when the inside gets scary. Uh, you see what you know what that means. Oh, they hit it. But remember, HTML in itself have tags inside. Tags is just different elements of the HTML document. So just like when a whole document, a tag in HTML will be a whole. But it's surrounded by these squiggly greater than this in sense. Represent the whole, right? Hold on, give me a second. All right, sweet. So, in doing this now, just like the body, not straight on topic at all, HTML itself has a header, or something I call a header, right? So, 
दूसरा तो पढ़िए कहीं जाने Alright, so remember I just all the times that the sound that you can speak with you. But just read the words in between the speaking thing. That's what really matters, right? So just as you open it, you have to close it. Right? Just like how you know the inside that's an established, there has to be a stop point. So this little pop 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 is just closing the same way. Stop it. Don't go further than this. Stop it right there. So this is establishing the sections of your different websites that you create. Right? So just like how you have a head, your head matches the H in the left hand, which is a head too. And then you have a body as well. Just like how you have a body, right? A body and a knee head. So right in the body you now. Same speaking things, right? But let's try to ignore the speaking things as best as we can. Um, it's required because if you don't have it, Things will fail and things will break. So, all in all, I'm going to say, remove all these realize that there's a pattern being established with all of these tags. HTML tags represented by greater than or less than sign, backslash, and greater than sign. But just as I said, just don't focus on these things, right? Focus on the words. HTML, head, body, something I already found out, right? And then you have a photo. So just like you open it, you have to close it, as I said before. So every tag follows with another tag. Every tag you open follows with another tag that you close. Every tag you open is closed the tag. It's all you do, right? It's all you do. So let's zoom in a bit. We're going to zoom in because just to get the appreciation of what is happening here, I'm going to draw a browser. I'm going to draw a website. See? So we're in the, on the website, these things represent. So the header part now, you know, look at the top of the top of the browser. You see your best, you see, you see Google. Google. The browser knows it. Yeah, you see Google. The browser knows that everything inside this goes here. You see me? And then for the body now, the world is on the body. So everything I'm going to say. So all the website that I created says the body. And then it's complemented with the footer, which is usually the bottom thing on the website. Where Copyright and all those things. Right? So, copyright is right in the middle. See? So, you have the head, you have the body, and you have the foot. So, everything will you want for your website is going on the body. Because the body encompasses all the organs and everything that moves. Everything that comes to life on the website is inside of the body. So, all the things of clothes, one of the things we get into later, why they're special, or why they're unique. And as some of you know, they are just, just focus on the body, zoom in on the body, and we're building things from inside the body. All right, so we're going to take a deep one, right? Now the key to document is my key. So as we still try to write, I'm going to try to create the word document inside the HTML. We're going to zoom in to the body term, because I said the focus is on the body term. So most of the work or most of the things come from inside the body term. So, why? I'm not going to leave all the things on the chair in Korea. So, body open, body close. All right, close, but not simple. Everything you own, I'm close. So, in Word document, I ask you how you hold it in. You take a book, right? Take a book, that's it. But inside the HTML, you know, we need to know a way to hold the tab. So, how do you do that? What do you think would do that? Any solution? You would just use the brackets on the sign and the closing and probably end with a slash. That's a star, beautiful. It's like a right, it's not the center, you might be right. That's the way you're supposed to think of it, right? So, so a right bowl, though it's not the center, all right. Let the boy come, right? So let the boy. It was a little boy, who's that? Right? <laughs> and there was a head with another bowl. So, when this is compiled now, we'll have the equivalent of this word document to show this in bold. So everything that is encompassed inside this is bold in the text. So you open the internet side, you see bold, 
more than like is within a bow tie. So this, this is just where the different syntax help you to manipulate the, the document that you create. So in mind, as we're doing audit, this create a dashes in a very complex way. It can be much simplified, but it's very complex now because as I say, once you understand the fundamental, you get appreciation of everything. So let's say I want to add an image to my word document. How would I do it? How would I do it? How would I do it? Okay, you can ask the question again. I never heard it. How would you what? How, how would I insert an image into a Word document? Oh, okay. Sorry to interrupt the person that was speaking. Oh, yeah, man. I'm so sorry to so, what do you think we're doing the base image? I guess that's a um, slash, the slash image, the type of image, and what, the, what information about the image then, um, the closing. The um, image then closing. Mm -hmm. so, uh, well said, that's it. So, you want that image, you put that image there. Like I said, ignore syntax for now, because the syntax you learn. But once you understand the fundamentals, you will research. How do I, what is that image monitor? What's that image target HTML? You research that, and you don't want to know that, right? So what I would do is say, how do I properly insert the image on that HTML page? The tag is just the tag. So the image will have the same image that you are drawing, or the same image that they insert. Sorry, JPS. <laughs> it was not actually JPS. All right, so, so now we're getting an appreciation of guys. All we're doing is constructing a document. We just need the document we need, and we're structured with code. And the code follows the same fundamental principle. You have an open tag, you put the word in there, you have a close tag. You put where you want, you close the tag. Put that tag, you put in where you want, you close the tag. Everything, you start and say you close the tag. You start and put it in there. That's, that's all you're doing when you're constructing a website. And that's when the beauty and the creativity starts, start to ooze out, right? That is where it starts to come to life. So all you know is bold. All I know is bold. All, I, all you know is image. All I know is image. But the way you can present your image might be different from the way I might present my image. And that is why you probably have a variance in website with my creativity is not yours. So as you taking these fundamental building blocks, and creating things. You guys use Lego? Yeah. You guys have money to create some higher with Lego and say, Bumbo, you did that, that is a one to PC. It's just a script. It's just a not a human no mind no more. My creative just and it's true. That is all it is. So you have a Lego parts, you have a million Lego blocks in it. When you sit on the box, I said I have a message, oh me move from a one block to a highway. Hold the middle, right? You start to create small simple blocks of steps to create a highway. As Lego parts are joined, they have a same Lego brick rabbit. Same yellow brick, red brick, black brick for the road. Just creative. Just creative. So that is what HTML is, and that's what more you appreciate. So every website that you build is just a convoluted of all of them syntax here that come together to bring something to life. Building blocks, right? And when you start building HTML, you don't need anything special. You need a, you know, notepad? Everybody know notepad? Yeah, notepad. Yeah. Oh, my notepad. And right, HTML. Yeah, notepad just takes a gum sheet and your command and hand. Right. When you save it as well. HTML. That HTML. Just like when you save that word. If you save that word so people know say where they open it. When you save that, that HTML, the browser will say, you know, the browser is supposed to open. But the browser is the one we can interpret. So all we have here is just Lego pieces. Small constructed Lego pieces. And then your creativity oozes and brings things to life. Right? So let's create something legitimate now. We use proper syntax. In it. So maybe we will roll this. So I'll create a resume using HTML. Create a simple resume. So your website, your website is a resume, see? So this is what I want to do. I want a picture here, so. I want your name here, so. So I call it ready a kid. So we need a first name, or we need some things I'm moving. So Kevin graduated from UTEC. Starboy, five ones, 
then doing a CXC. This is all we're creating. So we're creating a document delegation. And we're going to use an actual coding. So you realize that there's no proper formatting. Things are just all over the place. Like it's just a document. Raw document, like that X document. See? So we're going to create Kevin's recipe using HTML. So how do we start? Um, that's the head, that's the header first. Oh, 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 we, we don't know what, what, what the issue is. We're not going to know which document is going to start with the header. Anybody can answer, anybody. Like, like, like a legal. Yeah, it's here, you know. Remember, you know, the browser, you know, the type. We have the, um, probably the, 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 the Google file. The person that we came in, so we HTML, HTML, I guess. Yeah. Kevin, is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, the 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 because HTML is the entire document. That's always our start. I'm going to tell you guys, people use this and build mobile apps. People use it and build websites. People use it and build a lot of many things. And let's use documents and put it together and make it form meaningful. We get into the specifics of what that is. Right? So we want to build a resume for Kevin. So we we'll start with HTML because the browser that is reading the document needs to know the HTML. If you start with the HTML, you won't be able to read it and we won't be able to translate it. Right? So if you start with HTML, you close with HTML. You have to just know that establishing that this is the HTML. Full stop. So we want Kevin though. Yeah, yeah. Alright, well, alright. So remember what right, so Kevin is a document in the browser. So treat it as remote we said header thing is just the top part of the browser. So if you want to put a header, we can. So why not? Let's put a let's put a header. Let's write a header. When we write a header, I'm gonna put Kevin. Because when they, when they open the browser, we want them to say a Kevin website at the at the browser. So I'm gonna put I'm just gonna draw a browser for a presentation. So browser again. And at the top here, so we're gonna fill in as we as we sketch here. So, so we need to know that this is Kevin, it's a put in a head tag. Yeah. Alright. So Kevin will be here now. So if you put it in the head tag here, so I guess it's going to pop up here. But we we'll still need this in here, so not the body part. So here Kevin website is established at the top. We have a differentiator, you know, so many tabs can be open. Which is a good suggestion, because you need to know which tab is Kevin. Exactly, exactly, which tab is Kevin. See? Good? What are you good? What are you good? All right, sweet. So, no need to establish a name, Kevin. How do we do that? How do we put this onto the screen? How do we build this into this? So then, um, that is a body now. Body now. Alright. Body? It includes the image, I guess. Body slash image. Because we could include the image of Kevin. Not Kevin, that is the resume. So that the image of Kevin, what is about, and so if we put everything for here is in another body, is what you say? Body, yeah. Alright, well said. So in HTML now, we need Kevin to be a header because it's a big thing on the page, right? So just like oh, you know, where you can change different font size, in HTML you can as well. So these are called different tabs. So you have H1 tab, but H2 tab, H3 tab, H4 tab. And the only thing this is doing is every time you specify one of these, the size changes. So, you know, in a word, you have a big header, small header, small header, small header. So, as you go down in normal, the size just decreases. That's all that's happening, right? So, we need Kevin to be like an H1 tag. So, I'm going to pull the syntax. I'm going to say these are the syntax. Go pay much attention to what I'm saying about the syntax. You can research this thing. If you want a header for Kevin or a head tag for Kevin, you Google that, and I'm going to show you. So we need to put Kevin name in an H1 tag. And right, we use tag for this one. This, this, these are actual symbols, right? So Kevin, 
Zina will close it. Close the H H one this. The Sahaja will close it. See? The Madara is on the beginning of space. Alright, so we put Kevin at H1 time. I know we need to insert a picture. So hold it in. Image. Hold it in. Yeah, the image. Depends on the size of the H to H3. And the insert if we want depends on what thing this is complete size. So I guess the H and the image and close depends on the size of the image you want. Alright, I like where you're going. I love where you're going and I love your thing. But all these are coming similar. So these just refer to words. So this only matter, this only adjusts the size of words. And I said just like the document, you just adjust the size of words. So for images, you probably never want to use one of these for images at all. What you want to use is for image fundamentally is an image type. So A I M G is always represented. Oh sorry, I mean I M G is always represented. But the image tags are kind of tricky. So leading to the next point or the topic of discussion. Each tag in themselves have different attributes. So you know, just like oh, you have an eye, it can be brown, pink, red, colorful, different color, anything you want to choose, right? Inside the tag, you can expand the tags more to facilitate different attributes of the tag. So just like a boy, you have head, you have foot, you have neck, HTML tags have the main attributes. Some of these attributes are you have class, you have ID. When we start JavaScript in the class, you start to appreciate these things. JavaScript and CSS. You have different attributes. You have source, which is very image specific. You have many other things. You have other than general research and things, right? So a class ideally is just associating that tag with other tags on the back end. Right? I'm going to show you how it fits into it, but I just want you to understand the different um, attributes. So the class is how we are associated with different tags in the document. Right? So this class now, in creating one class for a specific tag, we can apply it to our next tag, we can apply it to our next tag. So you're creating a class or a series of tags. ID is just a unique identifier for the tags. So it's like, how do I for each person. So like Nico, how do I identify Nico? I call him Nico. How do I identify Sheldon? I call him Sheldon. How do I call what do I call Roxy? What do I call anybody's name? This is my unique ID. So I'm the only one in the document that has this ID. I'm the only tag that has this unique ID to me. And you can't replicate it on the document at all. Source is where you point to where the image will be located or where you're pulling the image from. So the reason I'm briefing you on this. Is because that is how you insert that image onto the page. So we need to point to the source inside the same tagging. So I can expand the tag by giving it some attributes. So now source equal to where we're getting the document from. So the source of the document is where it comes from. Where it comes from. Yeah, that's another part of that. We need to say something to um, specific um, identify the source where we're getting the source. All right, great. But don't be clustered by what I'm saying now. But by the end of the class, I'll be giving you guys a proper virtual website and you can see all of this come to life on the document itself right so don't be bombarded don't be clustered let's keep your eyes on the fundamentals and that's it all you're doing is a thing like that in specialized ways so we need to identify where the source comes from the source could be google because now the document we know to look to google for that image see but you have to be more specific give the backslash located here 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 just like any other word the HTTP, um, right, exactly where you get the image from. But as I said, we'll be clustered. You guys have a fundamental. We're just creating a document for Kevin. Kevin was here, see? So now that we identify the source, you can close it now, close the image tag, and then close it here. So, so you can see where all of the tags are going to be unique characteristics. They're very unique. They realize whenever they put a source in H H1. Never have put a source for him, never put a source in HTML. All of them have a more unique personality and different attributes that can associate with them. But you don't need to remember them, you just need to Google them and then show you. Right? I'll give you guys some source in the group as a lead for this as well, too. I can expand my knowledge. 
So we we'll get the image now. We we'll it, we'll get it from Google, so Kevin image there is on it. So we have Kevin header of the image, image is there, and now we need a paragraph on Kevin. So what do you think we'll use to get that paragraph? Information with um, okay. H, the other H on the left side, depending on the size, let's say, um, the size, right? Yes, that has H3 or H4, H3, H4, and there's a, there's another tag called paragraph. You get me? So use any word format. As we said, H, you can use H5 up to H10, right? But they look like a paragraph. Ideally, you don't want it to be the same size as Kevin. So good thinking. You can use H1, I can use P. And that's where, as I said, the creativity can start to ooze out again. Because there are different ways to write words in the back end. Yes, I mean, starting the project where it is H, H1 definitely is H2, open back and close back. This is the first thing I mean, because it's a name, it's the one first thing that we bold. All right, we remember that one, but like that. So I'm bowling first name, solid, love that. So Kevin, I start the paragraph with Kevin. Me? Close. Yeah, close it out with Kevin. Right? Okay. Question, wouldn't they P go first though? Right. It's paragraph. It's thinking. All right, so perfect. So I start the paragraph. So it's all I construct the different Lego pieces and I put them together to make them work. So yes, the P can go first, and this will be big, and then the others can be small. So, in a sense, we're at a lot of gibberish here, so before we close out the paragraph. See? And that's it. So, you just create a document, Kevin. And what we're going to do now, we're going to the computer, and we're recording everything that was wrote, so you guys can see how it behaves. Right? All right, so, Shell and, and what's his name again? Yeah, King the Job. King the Job? Like this. All right. Okay, so who else is on? Um, oh, oh, welcome, Kenny and Kevin. All right, cool. So I'm going to go to the screen now. Um, I'm going to share the screen. I'm going to write some code. You guys can just come around. Where are the screen? Yeah? No, no, we're going to, we're going to convert the resume into something readable, right? All right, did I, did I do yeah, uh, Confirm that we're still on seeing. Are you still seeing it? You. Everybody still on? Yeah, I'm still here. All right, can you skip it? You guys hear it? Yeah. All right, so, so because I was sticking to it's over there. All right, bring, bring, bring over visual studio code. Bring it down over here. Too. All right, so give me a little bit. Just patience. All right, you, you have the moves. All right, yeah, man, beautiful. All right, I'm going to close this over here. Share, share the screen with um, Zoom. Let's share the screen. I want him to see the screen. Let's confirm. All right, so, so con guys, confirm when you see the screen. Yeah, I can yeah, see. I'm seeing it. All right, solid, solid, solid. All right, so I'm just going to create a file. Should I use the mouse? Use the mouse. All right. Use, use the mouse. All right, here it is. All right, I'm just going to close this out. So this treat this as it could be a it could have been a this is a file. I'm gonna just yeah, you know, file take it out there. Yeah, man, I just create a window. No worries. All right. So as stated before, this 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 is this what I'm using is called Visual Studio Code. It's it's something similar to um, Notepad. It's something similar to any IDE. The thing that you use to write code in. So this is the most Fresh, you can customize it to your needs, but as I said, as time progresses, we'll get to that point. So, all we're going to do now is create a new file, All right? Just a file, just another document. But let's save that file first before we start writing any code. So, we'll call it Kevin. 
that HTML. Remember, just like any other document, I was saving it, right? So that is the start of the website. See? Uh, so Kevin having HTML file, I will create in the website. See? So going back to the board, um, we'll start out with an HTML tag. Let's put this here. Talk about that later. I'm just using the HTML tag. So HTML, right? I'll close in HTML, all right? So the beauty about these kind of tools, if you realize when I type in, it, it starts to it give you a suggestion because it knows that it's affiliated with that HTML file, right? So that is why it's important to save your file as a type of file that you're writing so you can benefit from tools like these. Um, this is called Visual Studio Code. I'll upload a bug at the beginning. You have Sublime, you have um, Atom, you have many things. A lot of people like to, a lot of programmers specifically like to show up by using Notepad to code. But you don't need, you don't need a headache in your life. These tools make life easy. Yeah, more, difficult, easy. more difficult to know, but they have writing everything right, Exactly, scratch. precisely. All right, watch this one. Um, can I get Chrome over here? Yeah. All right, bring, bring Chrome over here. Because I, I, want, I want you guys to not think that you have to know the syntax. I just want to give you guys an idea of how to use Google to better aid in your development. Because there's a lot of people out there doing creative things, different things that you might want to create, and you can get there using Google. All right, sweet. So here we go. Boom. So like I say, all right, start. And each thing is document, right? This is the money model I tell me first. I'll show you how much, how much people Google them think, all right? Intro to HTML. So, W3 Schools is one of them websites that can help you appreciate the different many tags that are associated with HTML. But don't be bombarded, yeah, man, I can't. So, watch this now. Me as a coder right now, me not type on the HTML head, body, and all the foolish stuff. May I copy the whole of this? I may go back to my, my thing, I may go paste the whole of this in. So we already have a structure already yeah, established yeah. idea. But you just you ready, you know. I guess we're gonna save this to make you know what I want, right? And where did I save this document? So guys always remember where you save your documents. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna try to save it again. Alright, so I'll just oh it's not working. Oh. You want to open that into the browser? Can I drag it in? I think so. I can just open the part. Alright, so I'll just see if I can find a document. Where would I default? Let me see. Um, right, wait. Well, anyway. Kevin. 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 So, so the reason that, am I saving some of yeah, Sorry guys for the, the discrepancy. Um, right, where do I move? Okay, to the left. All right, so file. Just saving it to a different location can, so I can know where I save the document. So I'm going to get over this, all right, this stuff. My create a folder. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, so <laughs> I call it Nile. See, right. name already okay. Um, HTML and right. create just need a place to store this file so I can access it easily. So, saving Kevin to that file, I'm going to bring, I'm going to show you guys. So, I'm going to that same location, desktop. Um, let's dig, 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 dig. All right. Yeah. All right, cool. Outer space. All right, so knowledge and you realize the Chrome pick it up a while ago, but I got double tap. Boom, boom. Open Kevin. So the browser understand that this is my first heading. Just going back to that, the H1 tag as we defined before, and a paragraph tag, my first paragraph. This is a P tag. All right, but all them fluffing is just for the browser understand. Look at the top, it's the page title, head up, another head. All right, so my format is because it looks messy. All right, you don't thing in five. I'm going to use my computer next. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's all I think. All right, so title, as I stated before, is just another tag that does something cool. So once it's between, I'm going to space them also, get a better appreciation. Um, space out. Space out. The title now is the tag you can give it, but I believe if you remove the title and save it and refresh, you won't see it. The page title is the next one. Right. Oops. 
Okay, this is another tag. So as we stated before, we're going to create a Kevin, okay? Kevin's document. We're going to save it. And as we change the title, you realize this changed to Kevin, mm -hmm. right? So this is the top of the browser I was talking about that falls within the head. So the head have many functionalities now, but as I say- um, Che, I'm not seeing any of that. You're not seeing the screen? I'm seeing the screen, but I'm not seeing your whole Kevin thing. Oh, oh. All right, what do, what do you see now? I sent Roxanne a picture of what it I'm seeing. Come again, Candice? I sent Roxanne a picture of what I'm seeing, but it don't send. Okay, okay, all right, just give us a second. Okay. So you don't see the um, browser, you don't see when they go on Google Chrome? No. no. Oh, yeah. I see the cursor, but I don't see the the screen, the Let me just, oh, it, they share the screen. They share the actual, the actual window. All right, I'm gonna stop the share. Sorry about that, guys. I'm gonna share the screen again. This stuff one, share the entire. All right, so that's confirming that you've seen Kevin's document. Yeah, thank you. Everything good? All right. Tell us when you see Chrome. All right, tell me if you've seen Chrome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seen it. Yeah. Are you seeing um, Kevin's document again? Yeah. Are you seeing Chrome again? Yeah. All right, so we'll just go over that here. So I might need to step back a little. All right, so as I was saying before, programmers tend to use Google a lot. W3 Schools is one of those sources that you can get HTML, JavaScript, and CSS information. And basically, allow you to try it yourself, and you can play around with the HTML tag, change up things, and run, and then change the right hand side. So, what I'll do to begin a document, I usually just to start any code with regard to HTML, I copy the whole of this, as many have time to write all, that all the time, and paste it. And once you save it, you start to see things be reflected inside the Kevin file. So I'm gonna take a step back again. So I save this file on my desktop just like any other file. So I'm just going to override the Kevin file. I will call it Stacy. So give me a second. Can I move this? All right, I'm gonna just. All right, great. So I'm going to change the Kevin file to Stacy. So we're creating Stacy resume. And as, as I stated before, it's just a .html file. Just like we have a .x file, or you have a PDF, .pdf. Same fundamental principles. Save that, and it now becomes a Stacy.html file. All right? So to open that file into the browser, I'm just going to close this again. And then I'm going to navigate to where I save the Stacy file. So as you see, it's just another document on your computer. You double click that and it opens in the browser because the browser is like a Microsoft Word that knows how to open HTML documents. So here we're doing a comparison between the code and what you're actually seeing in the browser. So I'll just switch from browser to code, browser to code. All right. So at the top here, we're seeing page title. Inside the head tag, as I stated before, you, you have a page title that defines the title of the document. At the top here, you see in page title. Inside of the body is where the things name. come alive onto the page. So here we have H1 tag, as Nico identified during the coding on the board. So in my first heading, which is a big bold heading, just like in Word, you just use a H1 or a header one. And for paragraph, it changes the format to, a, to look more like a paragraph, right? All right, so me as a programmer, I just, I just showed you guys how to flow, right? I would say I want Kevin to be the head or the title, oh, sorry, Stacy, to be the, the title of the document. So I'm going to just save this. I'm going to refresh the page and it changes Stacy, right? 
So our method has changed whatever was here to Stacy, and it updates. So the paragraph now is the information about Stacy. So this is Stacy resume. Sorry. Resume, please hire me. All right, I'm going to save that. Go back to the browser and refresh. This is Stacy resume, please hire me. So you're seeing that all we're really doing is creating another document. You gotta do this now to you know. You know, but this gives some more power. And now we're gonna discuss the power. So I want to create an image tag here. So what would I do? Go to W3 schools, I'll scroll to the left, I'm gonna see images. My images, nice, all right. So I see a bag of images here, I'm gonna say an image tag, all right. So we need a source, as I was discussing, the different attributes for each tag. It's important. And if you want to see how it looks, you can try it yourself, and you'll see the type of image that you're working with. So I'm pressing, is that a case where you're being a website that comes in, they want to clear images, and right. either add the image, or the image tag that you're using. All right, let me show you one, all right? I go to Brainbox. So not free promotion or marketing, guys, I'm just putting it here. <laughs> Right, right. Combination probably consider for your technological needs. No marketing, no marketing. All right. So we're loading brain box. I'm going to take the brain box logo. All right, so don't be bombarded by this. We'll go through this at the end of the class. All I do you know is just stealing images. So say I work with a company like brain box, right? I'm just pulling the image from here, right? Yeah, but these are just, I'm gonna say, just teeth. We will get to this afterwards, right? So I'm gonna replace the image tag from the source, because I'm pulling the source. I'm gonna run it. I, I don't know why. Probably not compute. There's a lot of mix up. Wait, 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 wait. wait. No be alarm, no be alarm. I copied, copied twice, or three times. Why? All right, we get some from Google, sorry. Probably some protection things, right? So, what is anything, image. So I want this image, no, the baby is cute, so it's okay. Um, right click. I just, I just need this portion of things, but I don't know if they're stopping me or I'm allowed to do it. It's going to replace the source, because all I want is where the image came from. I'm not going to allow it. I'll do it in the document. I'll do it in the document. I just do it in the document. In the restricting settings. Give me a second. Yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. It's within the source of the image. If they block us, then we'll just do it ourselves on inside the document. So, all right, I'm gonna run. All right, sweet. So this one actually works. So the idea here is just to break it out. This is what you call an image tag. Just like you have an H2 tag, image tags are a bit more complicated or complex. So here you can specify width, height of the image. You can specify where you're getting the image from. So if we change to 600 and uh, 6,000 for better appreciation, I run, you realize that the width expanded. Mm -hmm. Reduce the height to six, you realize that the height changed to six. Put it to something more readable. Why for that still? Why for that, dog? Sorry about that, guys. 87, right? So you see everything is being matured or changed, being changed on the page. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna remove the height and the width. This is just, just in case you want to manipulate it. I'm going to just remove the height and the width. Just not the attributes. I run it. So we get the actual size of the image, now, which is all more for the document, right? So we test it over here. I'll copy and paste the whole thing. I'll go back to the document. I'll put it between Stacy and our paragraph. And we're going to save that, right? So we move over to the page and refresh. We have an image. See, I will still have the Stacy paragraph down here. So I was still this, but it's kind of, kind of big now, so we can apply a different attribute. It doesn't matter where you put it. If a source, you can put it here. The height is either predict, put in the height, like 500 pixels should be good. And then the width, 500 can be good as well. Save it. Refresh the page. 
So the image size has changed. So it's better appreciation. You have a nice little resume. You go in here, you have Stacy, you have a description, you have a thing, right? So I'm going to go to something very complex now, right? Not to scare you guys away or anything, but I'll go to a website. You know, uh, Google, something I can appreciate. Um, you, have a, you have a website. Right? Let's go to this website. Because mm. I know you guys have a lot of pictures on there. So just to give you guys an appreciation of how the browser does what it does, if you right click onto anything or any part of the website, you can manipulate things in real time. So it won't save the changes, but it gives you a better idea or appreciation of how the browser comprehends or understands things. So it is in this area, this is what you call the DOM. The DOM is the document object model. It's basically breaking out HTML into different formats for the browser to understand fully. That's all it's doing, right? So we're just going to manipulate something on this side. So let's change our service to something else. So we're seeing that even in this complexity, there's a HTML tag there. So if we change the service to something else like Nyla programming, take away, updates the website. So we're basically changing things in real time. So we're seeing that even though this website is so complex, all we're seeing is H2 tags, we're seeing div tags, we're seeing many other tags, we're seeing section tags that basically encompass the fundamentals of a website. We're seeing classes, which we'll get into, we can get into that today. Um, and then we can see how best we can navigate to the different attributes that are there. So ideally, all this is doing is moving from this to this. So as I said, treat it as Lego blocks. Everything is just, everything have its place. You put different tags there, it does different things. So there's one called an A tag. A tag is if you want to create a link on a website. So let's say we want to create a link. We can go to W3 Schools. We want to create a link, so we'll click links. We use a H tag with, it, with its own attributes. And we want the A tag to go somewhere, right? So let's paste this. We want, when we click the A tag, we open Google from our website. So I'm just going to go to Google. And I'm going to copy and paste the URL. href is where we reference, what side the reference would be specifically. So we're going to change this and say, take me to Google. All right, I'm going to save that. And we're going to go back to our website that we're creating. Refresh, take me to Google. If I click it, what happens? It takes me to Google. All right, so all that, everything that is happening, they just have the different unique places. And of course, we don't want it to be dirty. So we'll probably want to open a new tab as opposed to refresh our website. So we'll go back to W3 schools now. Question, how you implement um, removing context with all the HT, H21, how you get them to like be changeable, like be able for them pop up at a certain time? All right, that, that's JavaScript. Oh, that's so there, there are three fundamental concepts of the way. We have HTML, you have CSS, and you have JavaScript. So repeat the process. I'm getting was how to get things to move like at a certain time because I'm getting this where we know but I understand it's ready to start doing then from can just copy things. Yeah, so start move things. They want to oh. basically make get this so far and get a part of it. start the website. Yeah, man. And the links to be carried to the airport. The changing the parts and you want to understand it. When things move on change. Yeah, we get like because I would get this idea in me and think about like creating websites to show kids how you can do it or to make it fun while it's been done. So we can actually try something, make it, and show people. So it's fun with programming. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, going ahead, but all right. So for the class, we want to cover CSS as well. CSS is the one that styles the website, and then JavaScript is make, it make things move. So the movement, JavaScript is a bit complex. So we will get there, we'll, we'll get there. You understand? All right, so for the A tag, I would do you know is adding a thing called target blank, which is just another attribute. But what we're trying to do is stop our site from being overriding. So if we click it, what happens is load on top of our site and remove our site completely. But we want it to open a new tab now, right? So we just added that target blank section. You click it, 
and it opens a new tab as opposed to over already set. So the attributes give it different power. Each tile have their own power through attributes. Not all attributes can share the same, not all tags share the same attributes. So href or source might not work with the HDM, h1 tag. So you're just knowing the difference. And usually, like I say, because the W3 schools, it will tell you what it can do, what each different thing can do. Um, another attribute I want to touch on is class. All right, so what class is fundamentally doing? All right, let me use style as opposed to class. We'll get into that later. There's a, there's a tag called style. There's a, there's an attribute called style, right? So style allows you to unlock the power of a thing called CSS. CSS is applying style to your document. You realize HTML in its yeah, own give it its own layout. It's painful to look at. You understand? But suppose you want to add some color to Stacy, right? W3 schools can help you as well. So as a top, instead of flow that we're trying to establish CSS, JavaScript, mm -hmm. SQL, many other different programming languages, you can click CSS. And you probably want to apply some style to text. So text formatting, right? So we can change the color of the specific tag inside the style to blue. I'll save that and refresh. Stacy turned to blue. So style tag applies to every single tag on HTML. Style tag is what gives the HTML document life. So all this pretty thing you see on this website is just CSS. CSS with style. The CSS with style. Mm -hmm. But the fundamentals that we're trying to get at is how to lay out things and how to understand the tags of HTML. All right? And that's where I kind of want to break for today. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to give a challenge, which I'll post in the group later. But the idea is for everybody to come next week with an HTML document of themselves. So introducing themselves. Huh? Not there is a resume, just introducing you, put a picture of you, putting your name there, putting a link. You can just get creative. Okay. All right. So for the image, I'm going to space it also again for better appreciation. And code or no space. Only, time, only reason why you're applying space is because people want to read. So better readability. So the image tag has an attribute called source that points to where you're pulling the image from, All right? So you'll probably get an image from the internet and the internet usually have its own link. The image would usually have its own link from the internet and you plug it into where you're getting the image from. Well, in that case, it's an image on the heart from your picture of your family system. Yeah, that's, right. that's the question I wanted to hear. All right, great. So the folder structure now, because all websites are just a compilation of folders. Our structure, our, our folder structures, right? They're just documents on your, on your hard drive or on the server or whatever you host your website from. They're just documents, right? So here's what we'll do. We'll go to the internet. We're going to download this image and save it to where we store the HTML files. Can I copy the save code? Oh, I want to save it here. I'm just navigate. Wait, wait, say to do this again. Um, cross. Cross. Let me go first. Oh. 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 This, this thing is real. How, how do I move this thing? Why is yeah. Zoom yeah. this thing? How move this? The bar. Oh, you want to move the bar? Yeah, let's make it high. Oh, no, yeah, move the thing. Oh, because the chat. Mm -hmm. So let's for me to go to the chat. Let's yeah, oh, read it. Yeah. And um, take this. Go to the chat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's go to the chat. Because I'm going to the table. Yeah, once you start, you get go by screen with that phone. Hey, Andre, you know, you're supposed to get Andre the chat bar down to the yeah, don't you? It just over, over the, the share. Um, All right, so, yeah. Probably that JPEG. So you got that JPEG file, right? save it. All right. So now we have to go locate it, right? Because it's in the same folder. We need to 
No, you can use Notepad, you can use... Oh, you can use no, code 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 code. no, but if you want to, you can, but you can download Visual Studio Code. You drop the link in our group. Yeah, that's what I can do. Notepad is more complex. I've been watching videos and uh, you have to know where you have to use Notepad. Indeed, indeed. You can basically write everything with the H1, the H2, the mm. sources. You have literally bracket source. Right. Basically, it's like you type in a document from scratch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> more painful, right? Yeah, the more All right. So, so to locate the image that's inside of the document, there, there's some amount of complexity, but the idea for, 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 for lack of that complexity, to save it inside the same document or the same folder, the HTML file is that. And then if you press the, the dot, forward slash, you start to see various parts of your document pop up. So, so that make it easier. Right. You can make the image from the system instead. Exactly. You have to move it. You right. Instead of moving, right? So I go save it and save the behavior remains. So. Well, I get it. I get it. All right. So, in your folder structure, let me just go into that. In your folder structure, you have different paths to lead to different folders. All right. You can choose to right click and get info, but well, this is just a map. But ideally, each folder have yeah. So everything linked from one source. So you have a drive. I think I should write it up. So you have the drive, which is the main point. Right? The, the drive is where your main point. So the hard drive in itself is a location. Right? Inside the hard drive, you have a different set of folders. You have a document, you have a user. The first, so right? So basically, writing this, if you're putting the semicolon and the, the driver, exactly the driver located. You know exactly where it's located. Exactly the document is defined. And that's an absolute part. So the point that is relative now, because the, the document lives where the picture lives. It so knows yeah. that I have a picture beside me in the document, right? But so just in a case that it doesn't know, and it's in a different location, you can probably say, all right, um, let's just parse down into the document to get to where the baby image is. So it's like we have a, a place called Photos. I go inside the Photos and want access to baby. That JK. So I'm going to dig from the hard drive straight down to where it's located. If you select the, the hard drive, you know, like, because you can move, you have, we have Photos, you have different, different Photos different, in, on the hard drive. So basically, let's select the particular hard drive with the Photos that you want. Yes. Because when we have Photos, we have um, desktop mm -hmm. hard drives. So basically, that's like same colon, C, the, the hard drive name, right? Yes. Bracket. Yes. And the locate arm, um, the file with the image in it. Yes, exactly. Precisely, precisely. I remember Google is afraid in but I would recommend for the next class, I would say you guys just work with the relative file, store it in the same folder that you have the HTML file, and then reference it from there. Yeah, so this is just a way to access it. So that forward slash. I remember in you know, a Google is afraid. I want to. I don't want to give you guys everything that I want you guys to surprise. In the website, they say can well, basically I'll, I'll let them say copy paste, copy paste, and, dig and it, edit. dig it, edit, change things. You can apply your own style. Do things, customize if you want. So You're using a style. Like, so if you yeah. like yeah. Google image, yeah, you can. So for Google image, we are like H1 bracket close it, then the color don't matter. Add the image and the the URL, the color, mm -hmm. to get the different, different color like both cars. So I said, H1, make it big, mm -hmm. and then the add, close the font size, mm -hmm. close, to get the, the whole thing, an image, semicolon, mm -hmm. with the source, one code, the, the for color. One <laughs> <Well>, code. <laughs> All right, just, I'm right here, don't think of it so deep. Just, just view it as, you need to know different tags that do different things. So if I want to, say I want to, all right, so I'm going to Google HTML tag image, because I want an image. It's going to bring me to a point where images, so image tag will pop up. If I want HTML tag paragraph, because that's what I'm trying to do. Paragraph tag come up. So you just, just talk to the company, just ask Google what exactly you want to do. I was trying to make my own. That's what I'm trying to say. Please, can I go and see this? Yeah, there's something like that. 
that'll be like a paragraph, that'll be H1 for the over closing, mm -hmm. then in um, image bracket bracket, then the semicolon for um color mm -hmm. close, and each color would I want letter to be in so that'd be blue. Oh, so yeah, bracket. color, yeah, yeah, the like color, like, yeah, like, like, yes, 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 yes. the color bracket close, different color again. All right, we'll all right, just to, just to, just for the persons on the camera, let me just break that down. I'm going to create multiple H1 tabs. Okay? No worries, no worries sir. That's, that's what you want. You want a creativity to just flow. So let's say we want to create many colors, many different colors for Stacy. So we can say pink and change it to red. Can change it to white. But why am I make sense? Black. Purple. And, and there's, there's a thing called color code that you guys would appreciate as well, but as I said, it's time progress to get into that. Everyone we'll go to deep for this class. Um, let's go back to where. Oh, nice. All right, so refresh. All right, so there are many different stasis sites, right? And if you want to, say you don't want them to be spaced, you can probably just surround them with a nice spam, spam tag. This is another tag that Capture all of them into one space. Um, there is a one close with spam. Each one might give it space. Hmm. Let's confirm. Confirm. Let's go and get them on the same line. I use a paragraph instead. We have to close our paragraph too. Yeah, we have to close all of them. All right, let, let's forget about that. <laughs> let's forget about that. Yeah, yeah, but I just wanted to, to let you know that there's no limit to what you can do. So if you want them color, color, you figure out how to make it color, color. And then you come next week and show it to us. And then we can assess it. And if there's any shortcomings, then we can see how best we can address that. So how you get it to be like, instead of the stasis, 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 so we don't get it in one. In yeah, one line, to, like it all in it, like the letters, each letter of a different color, mm -hmm. it stays as one. Same line. space, we don't just stay space, space. space, right, space I'm gonna do it first, eh? No, but maybe show them, um, using raw HTML. So we have a span, right? And we can use some called a diff tag. So if we want Stacy in one color, might create <laughs> right? It's, it's just confirm it. I just create a bunch of diff tags in that span. Diff might create a space as well. Yes, I don't want a space. Can you span for all of them? I'm just confirm. Let's just use span for all of them. Span allow you to add the different styles to you know. So span those. All right, so they're all in one space. Just give me a sec. Bring it to reality. All right, so Stacey, Stacey, see, realize they're all in one space, right? Mm -hmm. In one line, but we're gonna make them different colors. So let's apply a style, color it. That's what we want, right? For that, because we need the same thing for all the other spans. I'll just copy and paste. Copy and paste it a lot of time. So put it in the same span. Yes. Open span. Yes. Open span. Yes. I'll just give it some space as well, so it don't look as messy. Remember, you know, the program in the one, the browser or the compiler doesn't identify space. So you can space it in the document, make it look easy. All right, so let's change the colors now. So pink. Um, purple, um, blue, and let's look at that. Is it me? Yeah. So you can get quick, and we can know because you want them big, you can put the word on each one. So boom, each one, close the tab, and save it, and then refresh, and get this. But if you want enough one stage, you different different color. 
Yeah, you can you can use a span between the letters. Yes. Just, just, just you get creative, and you figure it out, and then show me next week. I want your name in all colors. Make it color color. This based on what you see here. But ideally, just building up to something great. You have the you have this requisite skill set, the basics. Start with HTML. You have the header. You have your body. And as you realize, the footer is not mandatory. The footer is when things get more complex, but you just need to focus on the body. And what's inside of the body will be shown on the website. Just come up. Refresh, everything gone. So this is what you call a comment. A comment really, just in case you want to describe something to somebody that's reading your code, you put them inside some special key. But you can Google how to comment before that you will see. Yes, the website is something that's going to Somebody saying something online? Yeah, hey man, no worries. That's what you do. That's what we want. So take that creativity and pump it into something. So we will drop what is required for next class. So it's like everybody can build their own thing. You can basically build your own website, your first website, and bring it and present it next week. So show your creativity there. Figure it out. If you want to put a bag of random new tags, learn the new tags, learn them do. W3 schools. So we'll put resources um, that you can reference to get information. HTML have a lot of tags. They say these are all the things you can work with. So break things, crash things, figure out how things work, and see how basically you can navigate. To start digging, but just remember the basics: HTML, head, body, and everything comes to life. And website name already. Yeah. All right. So website name. Yeah. So I guess you're learning Java because we already have an idea with our street. You know, a phoenix like an ace working on phoenix as the logo. Um, Kevin and and Candice, you guys alright? Oh, good man. Good. Good. Yeah. And anything special that you guys would like to see? Um, that would probably aid in what you need to do for next class. Mm -hmm. Really? Man, turn on the volume. Come again. Um, all right, so so Kevin and Kenny, so if you guys have no further questions, um, I would like to put a halt to class now. So I'll stop to it. Um, whatever information you guys will need for this week, we'll provide a document to to send over so you guys can enhance or further the learning on HTML. But thank you so much for coming today, guys. Tell a friend, tell all your friends, spread the word, and let's see how best we can make people more marketable where different fundamental skills are concerned. Yeah. Okay, thank you. This was great. Thanks, Kevin. Mm -hmm. yeah, all right. Kevin, Yo, that, come start the program too, no? Okay. Huh? That's you. Okay, okay, okay. All right, guys. So, have a great day here and take care. Have a great week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Uh,